Okay, we're going to put this fella down to warm him up a little bit, but we're not going to salt or pepper him at this stage, okay? We're just going to cook him and we'll season him perfectly afterwards. I didn't put any oil on these. A well marbled piece of steak doesn't need oil on it or oil on the pan or anything like that. Put up with a bit of smoke in the kitchen, it's good smoke, and get the pan hot, down with your steak and one thing, and if it has a bit of marbling, it doesn't need anything. The most important thing is be patient. You've got to let the heat do its work and then you must let it rest to relax. It's taken two and a half years to give us this. Be patient for the last 20 minutes. What we don't want to do is just get the fillet too well done. So we're just putting this one just flat down and let it caramelize. We'll give it four or five minutes there. Don't, don't touch it, okay? This one here is just slightly different. Quite often, if you only cook a big steak like this on the two sides, you'll have it maybe cooked a little bit more than what you want on the outside, a little bit under on the inside. So by placing it down on its fat like this here, I mean, a good big thick ribeye, a good thick sirloin sits beautiful on its fat for four or five minutes and just let it render down in one here and it's cooking in there. So it's when we turn it over and give it three or four minutes on each side, as I say, it will be perfectly cooked the whole way straight through. Bone is a great conductor of heat, but everything always tastes better on the bone. If you cook it on the bone, a rib roast, as I say, you know, chicken wings, everything. Everything tastes better on, on, on the bone. You just need to put a knife down the back of that and remove the bone and then you can slice it on the oblique later. Okay, we've had about five minutes here, so look at the way that's caramelizing beautifully. We're just going to stand him up there. This chap here just needs a flick over. caramelizing beautifully and you know there's a real temptation to prod it and poke it and one thing and our leave it alone <laughs> you know just let it sit there for five minutes now let's have a look at that i think that's doing rather nicely what do you think so we'll flick it over now in a minute and, and uh, we'll give it three or four or five minutes depending on how you enjoy eating it on, on, on each side okay now we're just going to put this down in its own fat that we've rendered. Look at the way it's sizzling beautifully, just in its own fat. And we leave that there for four or five minutes. Now that's been sitting for five, six minutes, just um, caramelizing, we haven't touched it. Let's see what it's like. Oh yes. Now, that's what you're looking for. You need this, this is the caramelization, this is the sugar. Now it, you'll get a lot more caramelization quicker on a piece of dry aged beef than you will on something else. Because in order to caramelize, you've got to displace the moisture. And because we've been doing that during the aging process, it caramelizes straight away. So, okay, look, you know by touching it, that's sort of medium rare heading for medium. Undercook a steak one grade to what you want to eat it because during the resting time, it rises by five degrees. Okay, so take it off a little less than the way you want to eat it because it continues to cook for that five, 10 minutes while you're resting. So we rarely eat a steak now without having a little slither of smoked Abernethy butter. Yeah, you want the butter running down off it. Okay, we've had five, six minutes on the other side, so I think it's time that we introduce this sucker to a little bit of Abernethy. There's resting and there's resting, now it's time for eating. Okay, so just take your rib, follow your knife down along the bone, and there you go. That is so tender, it's quite unbelievable. Three slices of that steak is actually quite a bit of steak. So, I mean, you will feed two adults and two children or whatever out of the one, out of the one steak. Now, we'll take that chop over here. We'll pop that down there. There we go, fill it off. Sirloin. Same thing down along the bone, over here, and whip it off. So there's our T-bone gone. My God, I don't know whether this or the butter was the softest, but it's pretty tender. And the fillet, we're just going to do exactly the same thing. This is rosemary infused salt, I love it. But whatever salt you like. So if Darlin's in a fillet mood and wants a little bit more done, there we are, and there's your sirloin. Bon appetit, enjoy.